you're a single parent, maybe a mother or a father, have a child, and you're getting into the gig economy. I hear they say single parents need the gig economy, but it's screwing them over. And I, I don't think it's only just single parents. It's, it's married couples, it's students, it's anyone who's trying to get into the gig economy. I think these days, looking at the numbers, looking at the take rate, they're screwing everyone over. But maybe for a mother who drops her kid off maybe at 9 o'clock or 8.30 a.m. at a day care center for a few hours, maybe she can get, you know, a couple of, of, of trips in there. Uh, but that doesn't make sense. Is it paying her bills? Is it paying the babysitter, etc.? Um, so some single parents told Business Insider that they're struggling to pull in enough to care for their kids. Economic instability, lack of benefits and high child care costs are major pain points for parents. Many feel stuck in these roles that cannot find accommodating positions elsewhere. So Bree, she's 40 years old, is struggling to feed her four kids the single mom in Fort Worth, Texas, drives for DoorDash, Walmart, Spark, and the restaurant delivery service Skipcart and makes just 400 a week on average after expenses. So as you can see here, she's chosen not to do rideshare. She's a female. She might think it's a little bit dangerous. She has four kids. She's heard all the horror stories. So she, wanted, she wants to play it safe, DoorDash, Spark, um, Skipcart. By the way, if you get deactivated by any of those companies, I mean, we have seen a lot of deactivations by spark drivers lately uh, go go below there's a link called activation hero we have a great uh, procedure in place getting you back on spark on spark or on doordash or on skip cart so brie faced cancer in her early 30s sorry to hear that fractured her knee damn sounds like my story here both of us man we could form like the cripple cripple driver society together brie and i um, fractured knee while working at an Amazon warehouse in 2022, developing osteoarthritis after leaving her job. She got accepted to DoorDash, but still remains waitlisted from Grubhub and Uber Eats. And when she started, she made about $800 a week. Wow, $800 down to $400. And, and why is she waitlisted? I mean, wouldn't you want to give this woman a job, Grubhub and Uber Eats? Uh, but, you know, if you're looking at Uber Eats, Brie, you know, I don't know if the money is really there because look at this, Brie. This is all you would be getting. $2 after, after $2 after $2 trip. In this economy, I could afford to feed my children. I couldn't afford to feed my children. Brie, who asked to use only her first name for fear of professional repercussions. So sad that each time a driver or food delivery driver is willing to talk to a media outlet, for example, like Business Insider. Oh, don't give them my last name. I fear the repercussions. Right. Um, I applied for every de delivery app I could think of. Her children get breakfast and lunch from school, but don't qualify for Medicaid or food stamps. She said it, it, it's nearly impossible to drive the number of hours she needs to while caring for her kids, especially when pursuing a degree in data analytics. So I like the fact that she's actually pursuing a career. She's doing this as like a stepping stone. She has far bigger goals, far bigger ambitions. It's a never-ending vicious cycle that lures you in with great money at first to the point you feel it can be relied on. Then, bam, you know, once they figured out your algorithms, bam, now you're making $4 per delivery, $4 delivery or less, Brie, um, on average and have to run more than one delivery app at a time and only accept the orders that make sense. So she's smart, who said her income dropped after she lost her top dasher status. She suspects for taking a week off. So she took a week off. She couldn't drive, personal reasons. Tony Zoo DoorDash slaps her down. Tony, come on, man. Seriously, you slap the people down? Shame on you, Tony Zoo. Um, 
Bree is one of many single parents who rely on gig work to make ends meet instead of struggling to balance a nine to five job while paying for childcare or taking their kids to and from school. And many parents can relate to this article if you are doing this as a side hustle or a full, full time hustle. Gig driving companies, including Uber and Lyft, have previously told Business Insider they are committed to improving the driver experience bullshit. Uber CEO Derek Shawi said at a February event uh, a week after the Valentine's Day strike, by the way, April the 1st, coming up, next big protest, uh, that drivers have been undervalued and that the company had been working to earn their loyalty. Show us. I mean, I, I might be there on April the 1st in San Francisco. This is the cool thing. Actually thinking of going up with my crutches, with a bullhorn, joining the San Fran crowd, and then, Dora Koshashawi, come outside. I need to talk to you. Right? So you might see me live on TV there. The drivers saw us as a platform that was dependable for them, that listened to them, and was fair, he said. But the nature of the earner economy and flexible earnings is that you have to re-earn that loyalty every single day. Well, he's not re-earning it. He's not even trying. In February, Lyft announced it would guarantee weekly earnings for drivers at 70% or more. We know that is a complete bullshit campaign. It's not 70. It's under 50%. We've proven it time and time again, showing the numbers, exposing their fraudulent uh, media stories or more of what riders are paid after accounting for external fees. Oh, yeah, take those external fees out uh, conveniently, such as local taxes and government mandated extra insurance. Lyft noted separately that the typical U.S. driver made about 23 per engaged hour after uh, expenses. Lyft has said about 15% of their drivers do not pull in 70% or more of their weekly rider payments. Though Uber hasn't announced any specific policies, Uber said in November the typical U.S. driver earned about $33 uh, per engaged hour before driving expenses. Still, drivers say these rates are not enough, given they sometimes have to wait half an hour or more to get a ride. That downtime, they can't just erase it. They can't just say, oh, active hour. You're putting in an eight-hour shift, okay, and you're doing six uh, driving hours. you got to calculate it as eight, right? Because you could have been spending those two hours elsewhere at another job making money. You gotta, it's got to be the downtime plus the active time. Business Insider spoke with eight drivers who are single parents about juggling driving as their main income source while raising kids alone all commented that driving has become more challenging over the past few months amid heightened competition, lower rates, and rising maintenance costs. Some have transitioned to more stable employment, while others are going to school to change careers. Fantastic. Most asked to, most asked to use just their first names for fear of professional repercussions, though their full identities are known to Business Insider. Flexibility can be an illusion, most single parents with whom uh, Brit uh, Business Insider spoke said they valued the flexibility gig work gives them. Most said they drive while the kids are at school or daycare or after they go to sleep, right? Some single parents with disabilities said being able to take days off has helped them stay healthier and avoid burnout. One parent added the work felt more, felt more fulfilling than their past desk job and help them avoid loneliness. That I can understand. Susan, a single mom in Ohio, said that though she's experienced burnout from driving for Uber, setting her own hours has been appealing. She said driving works for her as a side hustle and she encourages drivers to understand their market better. Side hustle, right? Not full time. However, Lindsay Cameron, an assistant professor of management, at the Wharton School who studies algorithms and the gig economy told Business Insider that some who rely financially on these platforms face an illusion, right? An illusion of schedule flexibility since many drivers still work long hours at high demand times. Single parents are in more precarious economic positions and you're doing a type of work that doesn't have the same social welfare benefits 
You don't have workers' compensation and unemployment protections, Cameron said. Cindy Lenhoff, director at the National Child Care Association, said skyrocketing child care costs have disproportionately impacted single parents, given that single parent households typically have lower incomes than two parent homes. This means that a higher percentage of single parents' earnings goes towards child care costs. Makes sense. Pushing some away from using child care entirely. If you are a parent uh, making right at the median income, but definitely over the poverty line, then let's take, for example, you're a parent and you have the ability to make 50000 a year, uh, that you have an infant and your child care is 12000 of that, you're looking at well over 20% for childcare, Lenoff said. It's a huge amount of your income when they have to feed their family and pay rent. And right now, rent everywhere has risen. True. Brian Greening, my good friend at Legal Rideshare, a law firm dedicated to accident and injury claims for ride-hailing drivers, said drivers drawn in by gig works flexibility are often not told how expensive gig driving can be if things go wrong which could have a huge impact on single parents in particular. These fluctuations and discrepancies can be devastating to individuals who don't have other mechanisms to make money, including single parents who are often operating on a single income, says Greening. Gig driving is particularly challenging for parents of young children. Starla 27 sometimes drives 16 to hours a day. Oh my Lord. For Uber Eats, Amazon Flex, and other apps to make enough for her eight-year-old in Jacksonville, Florida. She said she couldn't find more stable work in her area to accommodate her schedule raising her kid. 16 to hour, 18 hours a day. That's insane. And they are taking advantage of her, Uber Eats and Amazon Flex. As a single mom, it's hard finding a regular job with limited availability to give to a company. Although I have so much experience and attended college, companies do not even hesitate to say no because I can't provide eight hours during the day. She said the job is rewarding and allows her to spend more time with her daughter, though she's spending twice or three times as much time on the road to pull in her target income amount compared to two years ago. Shame on these fucking executives for exploiting people like this for exploiting single parents. She can't afford steady childcare for her daughter and donates blood plasma each week for extra income. Wow, what people have to do. I had to pick up multiple other side gigs to afford to stay on my feet, she said. Although it isn't a full-time job or in a proper setting, it's still hard taking on four different jobs, working 16 to 18 hours a day on top of pickup and drop-offs at school. Gig driving has some financial drawbacks that are particularly burdensome for single parents. Genesis, a single mom in Atlanta, worked nearly every day in 2022 to make over $100,003 that year. But tax records show she only took home around $19,000. This was her total after Uber and Lyft commissions, taxes and expenses such as new tires, oil changes, gas and car part replacements. The 33-year-old has relied on gig driving to bring in income, uh, driving around her kids' schedules. Her truck amassed 452,000 miles, Jesus. And she noticed it became much harder to make the amount she needed. That's because as, as dozens of drivers have told Business Insider over the last few months, an increase in the number of gig drivers has created more competition and pushed prices down. She's now working toward a career in the entertainment industry, I feel like the whole system is just messed up, Genesis said. You can't work jobs paying a minimum wage and can't even pay your rent. You often need to have roommates to make a living without the whole situation. <clears throat> it's not easy for parents with older children. The issue single parents face still linger for those with older children, Paul, 44, a single father in the Las Vegas area, pulls in only a few hundred dollars a week driving for Uber Eats, DoorDash, and Grubhub. One week, he only pulled in about $200 despite being 
on the road for 38 hours screenshots shared with Business Insider Show. Paul worked in project management and operated businesses, which he closed at the pandemic start. He reactivated his real estate license, but he began gig driving to continue providing for his 20 and 70 year old kids months after, de after a debilitating injury. Gig companies, including Uber and Lyft have said they are committed to supporting drivers with disabilities through accessibility and anti-discrimination policies and resources for physical and mental disabilities. He said for a few weeks he worked 40 to 50 hours just to pay for his rental car from Uber. The price was over $1,500 last November and he said he lost money after accounting for expenses that month. Screenshots show that many rides he received that month were only 2 to $3. He has begun to decline more non-profitable rides across different platforms. So I'll leave the entire article below but it's just sad it's just it's, it's truly sad that we are not protected by the government we're not protected by the department of transportation and all these institutions and they take such advantage of us do share your story i want to listen to your story we need to get your story out please comment thank you